In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect your agent to a Gmail account. I'll teach you how to have it receive emails via a trigger and then reply to them via a tool. So let's dive into it. We'll start by looking at the agent in action and then I'll walk you through how you implement it. Grace is an agent that's connected to a Gmail account via a trigger. Here you see in the trigger section, testing relevance agents at gmail.com. I can jump over to that Gmail inbox. It's currently empty. So let's send it an email. We'll go over to my normal relevance account on Outlook, testing relevance agents at gmail.com. Hi Grace, hoping you you are feeling better today. So we'll send that through. And if we jump back over to our Gmail account, there it is. When an email is received into this inbox, because it's set up as a trigger for your agent, it will create a new task or continue an existing task. This is how triggers work. You connect your agent to these external services. When relevant events happen, they create tasks for your agent. For example, if you connect it to a WhatsApp trigger, when you receive a message on WhatsApp, that will create or continue an existing task for your agent. If we jump over to Gmail Grace now, there's no task here. That's because there is a slight delay. There is a one to two minute window where we look for triggers. So you won't see it come through instantly all of the time. Sometimes you have to wait at max for two minutes, refresh the page and you'll see the task come through. So I'll do that now, there's the task. So you'll see that Gmail Grace received an email. How are you going? Hi Grace, hope you're feeling better. So this is the email I sent. Grace has sent an email back. So if I jump back over to my Outlook account now, we've received the reply. Hi Dan, thank you for checking in. I'm feeling much better today, best Grace. See the details of that email back in our agent task view. Click on the send Gmail email tool and this is the message it's sent that we just read. Fantastic. We can jump into Gmail and we'll see the email is also here in Gmail. So what happens if I reply to this email back in Outlook? I'm also feeling great. Do you have time at two today to sync? As I mentioned earlier, triggers don't just create new tasks for agents. They also can continue existing tasks. So in the context here where we're replying to an existing thread for a task that's already already being created in our agent. It's not gonna create a new task for every message. It will continue the relevance AI conversation. So if I go back over here, refresh the page, the reply has come through. So I'm also feeling great. Do you have time to get to the sync? The agent has sent a reply. Hi Dan, I'm glad you're feeling great. I love to sync over coffee, see you then. So let me walk you through how to set this up. Relevance AI takes care of the incoming messages from a trigger, creating the task from a trigger event like an email being received and then handling replies coming back into the same task. To set that up, you go over here to the trigger section. That means when you receive an email, a task gets created or continued for your agent. The thing that we don't take care of automatically is giving your agent the ability to then reply, go back to that external system and send its own message. To do that, you have to create a tool. Here we can see, send Gmail email. This is what you have to provide your agent to allow it to reply back to an email thread. Let me show you how this is set up. There's some nuances here that are really important if you want this to work. First of all, this tool wraps mostly a send Gmail email step. Here you can select a Gmail account that you've OAuthed into our platform. What does that mean? If you go to our integrations page, here you can see OAuth accounts. I've gone into Google and I've connected my testing relevance at gmail.com. So you can click this integration button at the top and connect an email. You can also see that I have a trigger for it from Gmail Grace. And so there's some basic things set up here. We have a user input for email to send to, the contents of the email to send and the email subject. And I'm plugging those into the tool step here. So this is a really simple tool that could send any email with my Gmail account, but the complexity lies in when I want it to be able to reply to an existing thread. If we go back to our agent task, you can see that it's able to send emails that go back to the existing emails thread in Gmail or Outlook. To do that, there's two things we need to pass the tool. And this is pretty applicable to basically any trigger that you have in the platform that requires threading. A message ID and a thread ID. If we go back to my tool, you'll see I have the first two inputs, message ID and Gmail thread ID. We need the agent to pass these in from the task to allow this tool to be able to send into the same thread. So you'll see if I go to my send Gmail email tool, I click the advanced settings button, I'm passing in this message ID into the reply to message ID and the thread ID into the Gmail thread ID. There are three things that basically every trigger needs to handle threading. Usually a message ID, a thread ID, and in the case of email, you need the email subject to be the same. In my user input for the email subject, in the description, I'm giving really explicit instructions to the agent. If one already exists, 
please pass in exactly the same subject with no changes. We need the agent to behave here and not create a new subject for the reply. Those three things are needed for Gmail to handle your email as a reply to a thread. But you'll see here, I'm also instructing the agent how to use message ID and Gmail thread ID. Pass in the message ID from the original email, pass in the Gmail thread ID from the original email. Why have I done this all in caps? If we go back to the original thread, first of all, you'll be wondering, hang on, I don't see a message ID or Gmail thread ID here. How is the agent meant to know what it is? Well, that's because we're viewing the pretty component we've created for these email triggers. If you click these three dots here, you'll see what the raw message looks like. And you'll see the raw message contains Gmail thread ID and message ID, all in caps. So in my tool, I'm replicating that caps formatting so that the agent is able to match them up a bit more easily. Then if we jump into one of these tools here where it's sent an email, you'll see in the inputs, it successfully passed in that message ID and that Gmail thread ID from this original message. With all of those pieces working together, your agent will be able to reply to the same thread. The last thing I touch on is if you go into the settings in your trigger, you have a lot of options. For example, you can filter the emails that it will get triggered by search. If you only want it to reply to emails that have something like agent in the contents or the subject, you can do that. You can also handle the cadence of how this agent is triggered. What does that mean? If you enable cadence contract, you can see that you can get it to only process emails on weekdays or maybe only on Monday or Tuesday. That means as emails come in, it will pause executing on them until it's matching the conditions you set out here. So it won't ignore them. It will just queue them up. And then on Monday and Tuesday, it will start processing them. You can set, for example, it, you only want it to process two a day. If your agent has other tools that hit other API endpoints that have rate limits, and your inbox receives a thousand emails every hour, if you process all thousands of those emails, you're gonna blow up the rate limits throughout your multi-agent system. Use this to help protect those rate limits.